Hi, I'm Ms. Williamson. I teach home economics at Faith Academy. I will be answering questions that were submitted by the faith community on social media. Why did my leche flan turn into a bowl of mush? I love this question. I honestly have only made one leche flan in my whole life and it was massive. It was huge, like very, very huge. And I would not say it was an incredible success, but I'm totally willing to make it again. So I don't know why your leche flan turned into a bowl of mush, not because of my lack of experience making leche flan, but because when you're baking, so many things can contribute to it flopping. So my first initial thought when I read that question was maybe it didn't cook long enough. Maybe the one of the components like the milk, maybe one of those was bad. Like it had gone sour before it even combined in the recipe. Maybe it, there was an issue with mixing. There's just so many possibilities of how it could have turned to a bowl of mush. I would say don't feel defeated. Try it again and you will probably figure it out. My best advice would be read multiple recipes. Usually as you read different recipes, you find different things that work for different people. If it's a family recipe, I would say go talk to the person who's been making it successfully for years and get their advice or watch them make it. But the most important thing when you're baking is to follow the recipe exactly. I don't know what you did and I'm not assuming that you didn't follow the recipe, but that is the most important thing. When are you moving to the Philippines? Right now, my plan is to move there on or around Christmas day, but obviously there's a lot of details still to be worked out. That plan could change, but that's what I'm aiming for at this point. What's your favorite kind of pie? So I think this question could be answered two different ways, maybe. My favorite pie to eat would probably be cherry peach, blueberry apple, chocolate, coconut, banana, basically all of them. My favorite pie to make, probably apple. And I think it's because there's a nostalgia that's connected to it. I was baking on my own at the age of eight years old. And the, the first thing that I baked on my own, completely with no help, was an apple pie. So I think it's just very nostalgic to me to bake that and it brings back memories from over 20 years of baking apple pies. What is your favorite dessert? My favorite dessert is Florentines. They're a beautiful, usually Italian cookie that's kind of lacy in appearance, and it's like a caramel, almond, really thin, crispy cookie dipped in dark chocolate. I love them. I cannot ever get enough. They're delicious. What made you love cooking? I don't know if I love cooking. I definitely love baking, but when I have to cook for myself, I actually feel like it's such a chore and I just do it out of necessity and it's honestly pretty boring. But I do love to cook for other people and especially large numbers of people, I get some sort of weird thrill out of that. Maybe it's the piece of it that's a challenge and I'm just, I just want to make sure that I accomplish it. I want people to be happy with the food they're eating. Do you like the Great British Bake Off TV show? Yes, I love this show and I watch it often. I even usually am watching it as I, or have it on in the background as I'm lesson planning. What's your favorite thing to bake? So for years and years and years, I have always answered this question with apple pie. Until recently, I thought, is that actually my favorite thing to bake? So I think maybe I'm changing. <laughs> my answer for this question is whatever I'm baking in the moment. It's so hard for me to have a favorite. Lately, I've been baking tons of pumpkin bread and I love it. I'm baking it to fulfill an order at a coffee shop but I still love baking it every week. I love baking pies. I don't get tired of baking pies ever. 
I don't get tired of baking banana bread. I love a good challenge, so any type of French patisserie, I love to bake those too. Um, I don't do it too often, but if it's a special thing, like I made some French macarons for my birthday, and that was really fun to have a challenge, and I didn't do them super well, but I learned a lot in the lo along the way, and I think that's what's important. What has been the most unique cooking experience for you? I'm gonna give you a top two. So probably number one, when I was in high school, I was a cook in a nursing home kitchen. After school, that's where I went, and I would make the meals. There was a government-issued menu, and so I had to follow that exactly. Like, we were required to also make an alternate menu, and it had to be different than the, the government-issued one. So if the government-issued one had, like, beef as the main course, then maybe I would make an alternate menu with chicken or pork. That sounds complicated enough, right? But then to add in even more complicated measures, people who lived in the nursing home were always being, they, they were kept under careful watch medically because they needed that, right? So their diets could change from hour to hour depending on what their bodies needed. My second most unique cooking experience would probably be outdoor ed in 2018. I have just never experienced anything like that before and it was exhilarating. I think it ended up being the highlight for me of my time in the Philippines. Yeah, I'm blown away what the team of cooks and kitchen staff could put together and um, what Mrs. Keating did to lead that. It was, it was just amazing. And then to see how we were able to provide food for so many people safely with no ref. I just think that's amazing. So that really blew my mind and it was so fun to be a part of. My mom is gluten-free. Do you have any good recipes for people with this allergy? Yes, in fact, many people that are close to me that I love very much are also gluten-free. And I tend to eat pretty gluten-free as well. If we were gonna bake something, I just use the same recipes that I would use with normal glutinous flour and I just use gluten-free flour and I don't know, I always had success. So maybe spend less time looking for recipes, just get some good gluten-free flour, which I would suggest using a blend of gluten-free mixes or flour blends. I really like ground oats mixed with maybe ground almonds or any other grain, but I always do a combination and I think those all work together. I don't know, I've always had success for the most part. Uh, pie crust is probably the hardest thing to make gluten-free in my experience. Is it hard to teach from the US right now? Right now, yes. <laughs> um, I am feeling burnt out, so I don't think this is sustainable. I'm genuinely concerned for my students or all students. It's just, this is not fun. I'm ready to make some changes, which one of those would be being in the Philippines. I'd also say it's really hard to teach foods classes online. And I think the hardest part is not getting to enjoy the food that others make. And that's one of the fun things in foods class is the students cook in teams in the different kitchens in the home ec room. And now everyone has to make their food as an individual for their family, which is great for the families. But I think the students are missing out on enjoying that food from their peers and working together as a team to make the food. And I'm missing out on tasting their delicious foods. But I must say, everyone is turning in impressive work. How do you make your dish less spicy after you've accidentally added too many hot peppers? This is a great question. I actually did a little research too to get you an answer. My immediate thought was to add some kind of acid to the recipe or, or the dish or just add more ingredients. If you have the ingredients more of the ingredients that make up your dish, just add those in. As I was doing a little bit of reading on this too, you could add a cream 
something that has like a cream base to it to help reduce the spiciness of the dish. Some examples would be like sour cream or you might even be able to stir in some heavy whipping cream or all-purpose cream that comes in the box. I guess a helpful tip that I was thinking about when answering this question also was if it's a recipe you've never made before and you are not sure how spicy it's gonna be, add a little bit of the spice at a time and taste as you go. And you can always add more, but it's really hard to reverse it. How do I know if my meringue peaks are stiff enough? I always tend to underbeat them. A good way to test this is as you're tilting the bowl to upside down, like quite literally upside down, if the mixture is sliding with you while you're tilting, you need to beat it more. It should be stiff enough to hold over your head and no mixture will fall out. It's very beautiful. Another tip would be to, it needs a little bit of acid, so you can add cream of tartar or a little bit of lemon juice. Make sure also that your bowl has absolutely no, and bowl and beaters have absolutely no grease in them. And that includes no fat from the egg yolks. So make sure your eggs were separated well. Something that I found that's really fun is to add the sugar very gradually. So maybe a tablespoon at a time. When you start adding it, when the egg whites get a little bit foamy and then beat it in slow, just slowly and gradually and it's a beautiful glossy meringue. How do I improve my knife skills? This is a great question. Uh, my first piece of advice for this is practice, practice, practice. But the second piece goes right along with that. Make sure you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing um, to keep yourself safe, others safe, and your food safe, of course, too. And also to be thoughtful and economical when you're cutting. If you're using your knife skills correctly, you should be getting the most out of the food that you're cutting as well. Always, always, always the sharpest knife or the sharper knife is the safer knife. So make sure you're cutting with confidence. And I would also say grip that blade, which is what they would teach you as you're learning knife skills as well. This gives you control over what where the blade is going. And yeah, again, practice, practice, practice. How did you learn to cook? I think mostly just by watching my mom cook or joining her as she would cook. I would love to explore with food and she gave me the freedom to learn and test mixing ingredients on my own or with her direction and i loved doing it have you learned anything new recently i think that's one thing i love about food is that there's so many varieties in the world and there's always something to be learning so i really do not claim to be an expert by any means. I really am in a constant state of learning. Lately, I've been teaming up with the students in Foods 2 and learning different foods from different regions in the world. I learned most recently about food in Honduras, which is a country in Central America. I just didn't really know a lot about their food before. I grew up in Colorado, in the states and there's a lot of at least where i live there was a lot of mexican influence and even a lot of um, the people that lived around me were from mexico so a lot of our food even that i grew up with eating was um mexican food and so as i was studying foods from honduras i was noticing there's some similarities and that was kind of fun i had no idea about that before also, this last week I was studying about Singapore and again, I really didn't know that much about Singapore and the food that they eat. This is such a time for learning. Do you teach the children you nanny how to cook? I wouldn't say it's any sort of formal lessons, but I do invite them into whatever is being made. They like to make their own food with supervision. We make cookies or cupcakes and something fun together and they're always curious what I'm making and they jump in and help as they can and as they want to. So I guess, yes, I teach them, but we just incorporate it into our day. They love getting their hands messy. Um, I would say if we bake something, I pretty much plan on there being a huge mess. For cookies, is it better to use softened butter or melted butter? I would say most 
often cookie recipes call for softened butter, but it, you really need to read your recipe thoroughly before you begin to, and before you need to have softened butter to know which form the butter will need to be in. This gives yourself time to plan accordingly, um, depending on the temperature of the room that you're in with the butter. It could take longer to soften and it could take no time at all. But the temperature of the butter really does make a difference in baked goods. And if you're making cookies and it calls for melted butter, follow the recipe. Thank you for your questions. It was really fun answering them and I hope that you have fun learning more about food and exploring cooking and baking.